We will now have a look at the uh, solutions for this first exercise, the Tiny Tunes uh, exercise. Uh, and I will actually solve each and every task in this exercise uh, and you are free to come along. Uh, starting off, I uh, already solved the first one. I did this in the uh, Hello World uh, example. Uh, so we will actually start off by uh, uh, solving the second one. And if we have a look at that one, uh, it says create an H2 element containing the text. This is a subheadline and put it after the P element containing this text. So if we look in the DOM, we see this P element. And our job is to, to, to place a new a header after this p element. So first of all we need a way to, to like query this area. So we need a query selected to get step 02. Uh, after that we need to create the uh, header and we need to add a text to the header and add the header to this div. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, we start off by doing a function I will call it exercise 02. Um, and uh, in this one, we will start off in the same way as we did with the first one with a query selector. So let the tag equals document dot uh, query selector. Where is it? There it is. Uh, whoa. And it was called step 02, I think. So now we'll get a reference to this step 02. Uh, after that, we need to create an H2. Uh, we do that by uh, creating a uh, variable document dot document document dot uh, create element. Uh, we want to create ourselves an H2. Now there are several ways we can go about adding uh, text into this H2. We could do create a text node, uh, but we could as well use the H2 dot uh, inner text. You will see that we have both inner HTML and inner uh, text. Inner HTML will, will allow us to, to add uh, HTML as well, so tags and script tags and even scripts. Uh, I, I would not recommend using inner HTML if you uh, if the only purpose is to, to add a text element, as in this case. Because if, if this text is coming from uh, an external source and you have no control over the text, then maybe you miss to do some kind of uh, filtering on, on, on this text and you add it into the DOM. If this text is not text, it's HTML, you could actually end up running scripts on your page that wasn't intended to. So in this case, we will use in a text. Uh, uh, and it should say, what should it say? Um, this is a subheadline. Okay. Save. So we have selected this div. We have created the H2. Now we need to add it after the P element. In this case, it's simple because the P element is the last one in the div. Uh, and by that, we could just simply append child to this div and it will be added after the p. So uh, tag dot append child h2 like that. Look at the page. Did not work. I got an error. Exercise, yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> we're not calling this one. So we need to first of all export it. Uh, so I will export it in the simplest way. Uh, just making it available publicly uh, in this module. And we do an exercise uh, start exercise 0, 2, and save. And have a look at the regenerated page and our subheadline has appeared. And we can see it here as well in the inspector. Should I actually increase that one? Um, so, uh, this is the second exercise. We could I mean, if you, if you, this this first exercise is, is just to, to, to get you started with the development tool and, 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 and trying out those simple API calls. Um, if you like, you could even try things out in the browser without using code. Uh, 
in, in the script file. You can actually code right in the browser if you like. So what we could do is to just uh, click this step 02 and you will see that now we get a reference here saying dollar zero. So we could reference this node by just doing whoa, a dollar zero like that. Uh, so in this case we could do everything in a one liner just to try it out. Zero dot append child. What do we want to append? We want to append a document document dot create element and we want to create an h2 and on that h2 we want an inner text uh, equal to or well this might be a problem so dot append child and we can append a document dot document dot create text no so I'm doing well quite a few things in one line. Uh, hello. And I missed a great text node. Yeah. Uh, so what happened was that, I mean, we could try things out in the browser. This is what I wanted to show with, by this. Oh, I'm in the way. But <laughs> uh, if I remove myself, you can see the whole command. So, so you could use, you can just click with a mouse, you can click something that you want to try, uh, try something out on. So if I click, uh, for instance, reference uh, this header, you will see that this header will be uh, 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 the money sign zero. Uh, and you can always reference this in the browser by doing that. Of course, this is only for debugging purposes or trying out things in the browser. Uh, and it's not for, uh, for, for, for the actual development, it's just for trying out stuff. But okay, so we finished the second exercise, we will go right on to the next one. So in the third um, exercise, we will uh, uh, do this one, create an h2 element containing the text, this is a sub headline, and put it after the fifth h2 element, having the text exercised free in the document. So that is this one. Uh, so the, the trick here is actually to, to be able to pick this h2 uh, with ex text exercised free, so pick it out using the query selector. Uh, in this case, since this one has an ID, I would actually go about uh, selecting the step 03, and then querying the first h2 in this div. Uh, however, I guess since the, the text is, uh, or the assignment is, is formally less than fifth, I think we, we are actually going to query all the h2 on the page and add it after the fifth one. Uh, and we could start off in the browser by, by, by trying this. Uh, hopefully you will see this. Uh, yeah. uh, so if we do a document, document dot query selector all, we will get an array of elements. What do we want to query? We would like to query every h2. Uh, and you will see that we will get an array back uh, containing each and every one of the h2s on the page. And the fifth one, hopefully, see, oh, I'm not able to, yeah, there. So, oh, that's actually, yeah, that's the, that, that is the, the fifth one, of course, since it's zero indexed. So number four. Uh, okay, let's try it out in, in uh, uh, Wishes Studio Code instead. So we create a new uh, function, exercise zero three. Uh, we export it as well that and then we could start off by letting h2s equal document dot query selector all all h2s like that uh, so 
we could actually uh, do something like this now if we like uh, to just get the, the, the fifth h2 on the page. Um, so let's tr just try that and uh, we could actually do a log for the h2 like that. Uh, and I didn't call it, did I? No. And we see that it's this one, exercise three. So we are in, in we, we, we got a right uh, um, uh, header. Uh, if, if, if we if we don't want to use the console log, we could of course stop the debugger at this place in the code. Uh, the debugger will stop and we can inspect this H2 being that same uh, element. So, so just different ways of, 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 of doing it. Sometimes I f think that just doing a console log is really, really quick. Okay, so we got H2. Now we are supposed to create a text uh, inside an h2 element this is a sub headline so let's do that uh, let new text equals or new h2 because it will be in h2 new h2 equals document dot uh, create element uh, we create an h2 and we append a child to that one uh, on the go and the child will be document dot create uh, text node and the text node we're supposed to say this is a sub headline okay and document like that uh, okay so we got our new h2 and uh, now we could I mean if we were just to, to, to do something like h2 2 dot append child uh, new h2 this one will actually end up inside of the first one so looking inside of that h2 yeah it will actually just add the text i think because an h2 inside of an h2 isn't allowed because that that is yeah that's not allowed uh, so it will just copy the text in this case but this wasn't what we were supposed to do we were supposed to add it uh, I think uh, put it after the fifth, so we are <coughs> going to put it after this header on a, uh, on the same level. Uh, and instead of doing an append child, in this case, uh, we could go to the parent node. So h2 dot parent or parent element actually. So go to the parent element. Uh, that should be the div uh, and. In this one, we could insert um, before. So we could use insert before to be able to insert it before the element that is uh, after the uh, uh, DH2. Uh, and that, uh, this, I'll, uh, I hope we will see what, yeah insert before the new child and uh, uh, the reference child. So this one, the reference child is which node we should insert it before and the new child is the child we want to insert. And the new child is the new H2 and the element we want to insert it before is the H2's next sibling. Because next sibling uh, or element sibling I should say, you should always stay away away from the next sibling because we have this problem with next sibling being able to be the, the text node uh, and not the element. So the next element sibling. Uh, so this one should be the P and we're inserting the H2 before the P element. Let's see. This is a subheadline exercise three and this is a subheadline. I might have made a mistake because... So, so it ended up in the right, right place uh, do, 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 document create element h2 to append child document create text node why wasn't I able to do that uh -huh. 
to I get the re I get the reference to Oh I wasn't able to do that. Um let's see if this one will make it. This is live coding for you. Why would that be different? It's not. Oh, I'm missing something. Document, create an element. So we're creating an H2. I'm, oh, I'm stupid. Of course. <laughs> New H2 append child. Uh, and since append child returns the, um, um, the text node, if I, if I do an a new h2 equals new h2 dot append child we will get the text node of course so just a miss from my side but yeah so this will work as well uh, uh, ba -ba good i think we solved that part of the puzzle so let's go to number four uh, in the fourth Task, we are supposed to change the color to red on the H2 element. Uh, so we're supposed to change this H2 to red. Uh, and if we, yeah, we, we can start off by selecting this one actually. So let's do that. Let's add a new function exercise 04 and add it to export and to call it as well um, like that and then we start to select uh, and we can select h2 by doing a document dot query selector uh, and the query selector will be in this case it's this one exercise four so we could use the id step four and get uh, the h2 inside all h2s inside step four if we like uh, so uh, step four was it like that no it was not this was like that and the h2 inside of step four um, this one, since I'm using query selector, uh, query selector, and not query selector all. Even if we were to have like say ten H twos inside of this step four, we will only get the first one. If if I were to write all, we will get the uh, array of H twos, and we can do that. And that will probably be even more clear in this case, telling us that okay, we are getting the first H two in this uh, uh, step four. Uh, so that's the first one. Let's just do uh, a uh, console log of the H2 and we get that one. So correct. Now we can change the color. We can do something like h2.style dot color I think and set it to red. Uh, and whoa, it worked, it's red. Or I don't know if you see it as red, but it's red, all right. Uh, and uh, however, this is like adding style and adding it right into the, um, uh, the JavaScript. And I would not like, or I don't like it. I would like to have my styles separated in style sheets. And we have a style sheets for this assignment as well. And if we look in this one, we, we have a, a, a class called red. Now it's called red. So it's kind of hard to change it to bluish color. But so this would be better off by maybe calling it warning or something like that, depending on why we want the element to be red. However, we can change the red color if you like to, to another uh, uh, other um, other red color. So we could have, whoa, come on. Uh, we could change it to a darker red like that, for instance, and save that one. I hope Webpack is rebuilding it. Not serving the style sheet, I think. Let's see. Oh. Well, this is interesting. Let's have a look at that. Then, blue. OK. 
Okay. Reload. It's still red. So apparently with this uh, webpack setup we need to actually reload the whole page. Oh, I'm stupid. We haven't in we ha I haven't written the code for this yet. Okay, let's do that first. I I'm ahead of myself. So instead of doing this, we should actually add a a class to to the H2 element, uh, and I will do that by using the class list uh, uh, to be able to add a new class to this H2. I'm I'm not sure. It, I'm the, it might be that this H2 have already uh, another class and, and, and then we want to add the red class. So we will add, in this case, red, like that. Reload, and now it's blue. Okay, let's see if we change it to red again. Go back, reload, and it's red. So yeah, it will work actually. Uh, Okay, that was the fourth assignment. Uh, now I need to add power connected to my computer and I'll be back for the fifth. So in this fifth assignment, we are supposed to add a P element containing the text you clicked when the user clicks this gray box or this text. Okay, so first of all, we need to uh, address or uh, being able to reference this uh, uh, this text, uh, so let's have a look in the inspector. So it's this gray box which contains an A. Uh, so in this case, we have a class called gray box. Of course, we could use that one, or to be sure to not change another gray box, uh, we could use the step five as a identifier and get the gray box inside of step five. Uh, so I think we will start off by doing that. Okay, you know the drill. Function exercise 05. Did something really wrong. <laughs> Unexpected token. Oh, forgot it. Right. Um, okay. Let the let the gray box equals document dot query selector. And in this case, since I'm querying a class. I will actually do the query selector all. I will query the step 05 and the uh, gray box inside of that, then we will take the first one. Um, gray box. Let's try it. Yeah, correct. We get the right box. However, in this case, I mean, it actually says when the user clicks the gray box, so the click uh, event should actually, in this case, occur on the, on the gray box. However, I will argue that in this case, the A, the click me A, should be actually styled with CSS so that it fills the whole gray box. So I will add it to the A in this case. Uh, and that is why I will uh, continue to get the A inside of uh, um, the gray box. Uh, and this is the same, we could have multiple A's and I will get the first one, or we could just do query selector like that. Uh, in this case, we get this one. So it's even simpler. Okay, to be able to write code that should execute when the user clicks uh, the button, we need to add an event. So let's do that. Uh, gray box dot add event listener click. Since it's a click, uh, we want to add a click event listener. Uh, and as a second argument, we will have the, uh, uh, um, uh, the callback function. Uh, we could do it like this. Function event and console log you clicked, just to try it. 
So we go back and I click and it will say you clicked. Note what happened. Since I executed this link, it will take me to this hash sign on the page or the anchor uh, uh, sign. Uh, if we do not want that functionality, which we won't, we don't want, we could use the event to stop uh, 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 prevent default. So if I do event dot prevent default like that, if I remember correctly and reload the page, when I click this one, we will stay on on the page. So we are actually telling the browser that okay, we got this. We will take control of 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 the click. Please do not execute the link. We, we got it. Okay. Uh, what, was we, what were we supposed to do? We were supposed to add a P after this one, after this step 05. Uh, okay, let's do that. Uh, we need to create an element. Create element. Um, and uh, no uh, p dot append child uh, document print uh, create text node or no we will do it like in our text uh, you clicked that. Okay, so we created the P within a text you clicked. Now we need to add it to the DOM on the right place. So what is the right place? Well, uh, of course we could query step five again if we like and append it. That, that would probably be the simplest way like this. Document dot query selector uh, selector um, step 05 dot append child p like that we click and we append it and we click and we click and we click uh, that is probably the simplest way of course you could use in this case this because this will reference the uh, the, the uh, uh, gray box in this case or the a uh, actually gray box a this would be called gray box a uh, or even clearer we could write gray box a because we will have a difference on this inside of uh, this uh, uh, callback function if we instead use so okay let's do this console log um, bop, 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 bop. Um, this so we log this inside of, of, of when we click basically so I click uh, and you will see this will reference the a tag which is the same thing as writing gray a box so if we click that one it will still be the same however if I change this from being a, an anonymous function to an arrow function we will see this behavior change. So instead I will do something like this. Uh, save, click, we still get the, the A ref because we, we wrote gray box. However, if I do this, this will probably change quite a bit because now this will not reference um, um, uh, the, the a tag anymore it will reference the outer scope and the outer scope in in, in which this is executing is actually uh, the module for 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 this exercises and you see that there is the module that we uh, we uh, exported so it's actually this object more or less so by that I, I I would urge you to, to try to use the named 
variables that you have because you will probably end up using error functions more and more and then you will get into trouble if you, you, you do things like this. Um, okay, so when we have a reference to, to, to this uh, eight element, we could do a parent element dot, uh, and then we get to the div dot uh, parent element dot append child. However, if, if you do things like this, you are quite prone to, to oh, uh, parent element of undefined. Uh, no, not this. Uh, gray box. <laughs> now I did it wrong. Um, you're quite prone to, to, to the uh, um, um, lay, layout of the page changing. If, if someone inserts a new, new element, for instance, this could break the chain. So you need to be careful when you uh, do things like, like this. Uh, but we solved uh, this one. The most important thing is to note how to add events to, uh, to the application. Um, um, I think some of you will have a hard time understanding events from the beginning, but just try to do simple things like this, just adding click, clicks to, to things and, and you will probably learn learn quite quite fast. And I'm, I mean, this one is executing, this code, the marked code is executing when the user clicks uh, the button and not when we load the page. And this is quite unusual for you because this is the first time you are actually working with events. So we will not have a guarantee. We don't know when this code will execute. It could be now, it could be in an hour, depending on when the user clicks the pitch. Okay, let's go to the sixth uh, uh, exercise. In this task, <coughs> we're supposed to use something called a document fragment. And the document fragment is like the document node in the browser. However, it's not connected to any rendering. So, so we could create our own small documents and work with those documents in the same way as the, the document object on uh, in the browser or uh, that the user is seeing through the DOM. We could use with the, work with this document fragment and uh, when we do, and make changes, those changes are not rendered because the document fragment isn't visible to the user. So we could change a lot of things without re-rendering the page and we were done with the changes. We could take this document fragment and just add it to the DOM using a pen child, for instance. Um, and in this case, we're going to use the document fragment to create 10 list elements and add it to a UL with the ID list 06. So have a look in, in, in this exercise. Uh, we see the UL with a uh, uh, ID list and it's empty. So, so we're supposed to create a document fragment, add list elements, 10 of them, uh, into the document fragment and then add the document fragment to the UL. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, in this case, uh, I've already prepared, so we do not need to sit on waiting for me to write all that code. Uh, let's create a document fragment. Uh, let frag equals document dot create document fragment. Uh, like that, so we create an empty document fragment. Uh, now we could use this frag as the document, more or less. Uh, uh, so, so we can append childs, we could, uh, 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 I'm not sure, we, yeah, we have create element, for instance, even on, on, the, on the fragment. Uh, so we need to create 10 uh, list elements and add text to those 10 elements. Uh, we could do that by uh, using a for loop, for instance, and, and just do it 10 times. So we will start off by doing that. Uh, for uh, let i equals zero, so, so you less than ten, uh, uh, i equals i plus one, something like that, I guess. Uh, okay, uh, so for each <coughs> time the loop uh, will be, be be executed, we are supposed to create a 
uh, an, an li element. And I guess we could, I actually not tried it, but I guess we could do a create element on this uh, fragment list like that. Uh, that list equals that one. List uh, dot uh, inner text. <coughs> what was this text supposed to be? Uh, to create five, uh, no, uh, doesn't say, but we could, well, we could add something like, we could add a document, the template, uh, list element number um, uh, i plus one, for instance. Um, so it will say list element number one, two, and up to ten, okay? And <coughs> when we created this element, we will add it to uh, the document fragment. So in this case, fragment dot append child right, yeah. uh, and we add a list element like that. Okay, so we have created 10 list elements, we've added them to the document fragment. The next step is to add the fragment to the document itself. And we sh were supposed to add it to list 06. So document.query selector uh, list 06 dot append child uh, frag okay let's see oh nothing worked uh, frag create element is not a function oh they don't work like that okay then we need to do a document dot create element actually, even though the <laughs> we should still just said it was there. Uh, oh, the template oh, didn't work. Did I write something wrong with the template? I probably did because we need a like that, right? Am I not supposed to write it like that? Oh, template strings. JavaScript, Google is your best friend in this case, it's even not Google, but it's DuckDuckGoGo, but whatever. Ah, uh, oh yeah, of course. Those are quite new for me, so that's why I messed up, I guess. Um, yeah, so list element number one, two, three, and we can see them in, in the source. Okay, let's go to the next one. Exercise number seven. Use the template provided in the document head section to create five list elements with links to pages of your choice. Add a list element to the list with the ID list 07. It could be the same link on every list element and I will utilize this, I think. So there is a provided template in, uh, in this HTML. We could have a look in the head. Uh, we can see the template. And the template is just a document fragment. We know that by now. Uh, and the document fragment in this case is only a list element. So it's, oh, well, it's not. It's actually a list element with an A tag inside of it or a e element inside of it. So, I mean, in many cases, this code will be s substantial and, and you do not, do not want to create everything using create element all the time. So we could take this document fragment, copying it and adding it to the DOM. Uh, and we would do that in this case. Uh, remember the ID is step 07 template. We will need that to reference this template. Uh, so let's go over to the code. Uh, oh, I didn't prepare this one. Function exercise 07. Oh my God. And I'm doing it wrong as power. Come on, like that. Um, Okay, uh, first of all, we need to reference this uh, template uh, and I will uh, uh, const, we could try const for instance, const uh, template node equals document dot query selector um, uh, was called like 
that. So we get the reference to that template node. We were to, supposed to add five links. So let's do the same thing as last time. Let i equals zero, as long as i is less than five, uh, i plus plus. It's, it's allowed, even though Crockford hates it. Um, and for each and every time we want to clone the content of this template, then we can do that by using something called document.import uh, import node. Uh, so what this will do is it will take a node, in this case uh, the content of the template node, will import it and we could say if we want this to be a deep copy or not. In this case we want a deep copy because we, we will like to copy the list element and, and the A element inside of it, not just the list element. So we take our template node and now we need to do uh, dot uh, content. Content. Uh, wasn't supposed to be content? Well, I think so, at least. Um, if I remember correctly, we, we want to do it as true because we want a deep copy of that uh, uh, that list, and we could uh, just uh, place it in. Well, should we do it like this? Maybe that uh, uh, li template. So we, and li template equals that one. So for each iteration we will cl uh, clone or import con uh, those nodes and we could just do a console.log on list template just to see that it works. Um, do, 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 it does not content. Cannot read com is it Uh, let's see, document fragment, document, uh, no, uh, document dot import, no, for was called, is it text content? Let's see an example. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I would like to see an example with templates, please. Uh, import no template. Well, I think I will have a look at that one. <laughs> there we have a template, import node content. Yeah, I thought it was like that. What content, template, template. Template node. Ah, of course, was correct. But I, you saw that, right? I uh, I didn't query the ID. Use the ID selector. Um, okay. Yeah. And now we get our five uh, document fragments, and those are containing this the list item and each and every one is having an A and it's uh, href. And we were supposed to add. Uh, uh, some link to those pages or those uh, uh, a, a, a elements. So let's do that. So list template will give us the list element uh, or the document fragment of the list element. So we could use the list template to query the a element inside of that one um, and we could um, um, what were we supposed to be? We were supposed to set an attribute, right? Set attribute. The code completion will not follow. Uh, and we will would like to set the the uh, href attribute to, in my case, sumit.se. So nothing fancy. That. Um, okay. Let's see what happened. Yeah, so all of them are now sunet.se. Uh, and I 
let's see. Do it like that. Five undefined, yeah, because set attribute will not give us the right one, so we do it like that set attribute. Okay, uh, we also need to do a a dot in our text. We would like to have some text in this case. We could do something like this is the um, no. Um, <laughs> link number okay i plus one do the same thing as in the last assignment uh, okay this is the link number one two three four and five okay good so we've altered the uh, uh, the list template uh, in this case I, I guess if we do a list template template like that no, uh, no li template like that and we look at the document fragment it's actually the document fragment that we have changed so uh, everything is good now we need to add the document fragment to uh, the list with the id list 07 so in the document we query the uh, list 07 we will do an optimization soon and we append child uh, list template like that have a look oh this is the link number one two three four and five yeah that that is pretty much what we were supposed to do in this case i mean always calling the query selector on the document for each and every loop for getting the same document over and over again we could instead do something like get the uh, list 7 equals I mean, like that and then we could do a list 07 dot append child remove that one it should work just as good in this case. Uh, perfect. Done with exercise number seven. In the eighth exercise, we are supposed to do something like a um, to-do list. Uh, so we have this uh, input field and when we press, press the add to list button, uh, the text will be copied to a uh, unordered list below the input field. Uh, we could have a look in the code. Uh, do, do, do. We have the button add to list and we have a to do list with an empty uh, unordered list inside of it. So, so our job is to, to copy the text from this input field when the user clicks the button. Okay, uh, we have a couple of things that we need to, to, to address here. So first of all, we need to be able to read the value of the input uh, field, and we need to connect an event listener to the click, uh, to, to when we click the button. And this is actually the thing I will start off by doing first. So when we click the button, we could start looking at and finding the text from the input field. So uh, how do we reference this button then? Well, um, we have the to-do list form. We have the step eight. So this is the unique ID, the step eight. and or we could use the to-do list form, maybe. It's an ID, so it should be unique. So the to-do list form is bottom. That is the one we want to reference. Uh, let's do that. Um, let uh, button equals document.query selector uh, to-do list form no uh, to do list form yeah so to do list form and the button inside the to do list form and you will see me do this a lot like 
just trying to, to see that I reference the right things. It's it's you saw me have a bug. You saw I, I I had a bug on exercise seven. And that was because I I actually didn't double check that I I got a reference to the right object. And and then I I got on and I coded and I thought the the error was reading out the, the template. I think it was in that code. And, and the problem wasn't the content in the in, in uh, referencing the content. The problem was I wasn't referencing a template at all. So please do because I mean you will save a lot of time in the other end. Okay, we got a button. Uh, button dot add event listener. Uh, we want to add a click to the button and when we click we add an uh, whoops, event handler to that button. And we need a comma as well. Okay. So I will use the uh, the arrow function in this case because I think it's more neat when, when working with uh, event listeners. Um, okay, uh, so when we click we need to, to, to find out the, the value of, of the input field. So how to reference the input field then? Well, uh, we could do uh, previous element sibling, I guess, and, and get the input that way. Um, why not? Into button. It's a button. Button dot. Uh, no, it's previous element sibling. So button dot previous element sibling will get us the input field because. Um, yeah, how, how they are laid out in the code. Uh, so let's just console.log it just to make sure. Um, and that did not work. Well, we need to click the button, of course. So we click the button and we reference the right uh, input field in this case. So, how to find the value? Well, now the inspector is really good. I will get out of the way. Or can I can I have the console up here instead? Yeah. Uh, so we get the reference to this input field. And we could just like look at the reference. Uh, I thought we could at least. Uh, cannot do it like that. Um, Okay, then we do it like this instead. Instead of doing it in the console, we will stop the debugger. Debuggers stop. No. Debugger. Debugger. Unexpected. No debugger. Can't I? Okay. Oh well, it stopped, I guess. Strange. Uh, well, let's do it the old fashioned way then. So, yeah, I've actually, let's see if we can reload it. Let's do that. Click the button. The debugger stops. So, it stops when you click the button. Okay. And we get the previous sibling, in this case that one. We could uh, look in the watch. We could actually do a button dot previous, previous element sibling. Uh, I, or can we just add that one to the watch? Copy it to the watch then. Okay, now we got it. I will be in the way, of course. Okay, okay. So here we have the input element up there, and we could just have a look at the element. Uh, in this case, we could see all the attributes and properties of this uh, this element, uh, and I mean you can go go 
through them all uh, if you like uh, you will when you do see that we have something called a value so if I were to, to reload the page write my name and click add to list uh, we could scroll down and we will probably see that my name will appear here so getting the value out of this input field will get us the value uh, and that is what that is what we need in this case so if we console log dot value value like that go back uh, um, remove the dot one and just start clicking it says nothing and if I write like that, you want that, uh, you will see we could get the value all the time. So now the, the rest is pretty simple because we've done it before. We need to create a list element, we need to add the text to the list element, document.create element, uh, we'll create a list, uh, let li equals that one, li.inner text should equal that one uh, and when that is done we need to add it to whoa, uh, do, 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 do. oh I forgot something well, button that one okay uh, then we should add it to it's so hard when I um, amplify everything uh, I should add it to the to-do list ul, so uh, document, document dot query selector the to-do list ul right dot append child li save Do -do. Do -do. Hello. And we got a to-do list. Neat. However, we were also supposed to, if I reload a page, if it's empty, we should not add empty uh, uh, in bracket, uh, empty dots. It says that if any exist, we should add it. So we need a simple if statement as well. So in this case, if uh, reference that one first of all so if uh, oh well let value equals this one uh, value bop, bop. Uh, if value dot length is greater than zero, then we could do this. Or if it's less than or equal to zero, uh, we could just do a return like that if we like. Be the same thing. Uh, if I click, what will happen now is if we will get the value of the input field and if I, if it's empty, then we will just return. And this is quite a neat way of, of guarding the rest of the, uh, the event handler. Of course, I could do it like this. But if the code in the, this one grows, I always need to have it inside of the if statement. So, 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 so I would rather do it the other way around, just returning in the beginning of the, of the, 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 the callback if uh, the statement isn't fulfilled. And now we've uh, accomplished the, the eighth exercise. Okay, I hope you followed along and we will have a look at the last one. In the ninth and last exercise, uh, we're going to do a um, username check. Uh, 
Well, this often is a, a password check to check if, if, if the password matches. In this, case it, in this case, it's two usernames instead. So what we have here is two input fields. And when we add a username to one of them uh, and the other, it should check if the usernames match or not. And if they match, it should write a text that they do. If they don't, it should write a text that they don't match. Uh, it should only do this when you leave a feed, uh, an input field and both texts are set. So, so we have some conditions. First of all, we will set this up by, by, by creating references to the things we need to work with. So let's start off by checking uh, uh, um, how this looks in the browser. So we have the text boxes 09, it says. So it's the div text boxes 09. And inside of that one, we have uh, two input fields, this one and this one. So we will reference text box 09 input. Okay. Uh, document dot query selector all in this case, because it's more than one. Uh, Text boxes 09. Boxes 09 input. This will give us uh, probably uh, yeah, the two input fields. This one and this one. Okay, let's name them. Uh, This will not be the prettiest of codes, but I will do this anyway. Let username equals that one. Oh, writing beautiful code, ain't I? And I will name this confirm. Confirm equals, uh, oh, sorry. This equals the first and this the second, like that. Uh, and we could, of course, console log confirm just to make sure uh, so somewhere yeah there I get the confirm one we're not interested in the input field per se all the time so we are also interested in the value so I will actually do a let user no we need a reference to the username so let, let it be like this okay Next thing, uh, when we leave uh, an input field, uh, something called blur will happen. Uh, in this case, we could make use of something called delegates. So instead of setting a event listener on, on username and one on the other, a confirm, we could actually set a uh, um, uh, event handler on the, 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 the top uh, uh, this one, the text box is 09. So when those something happens inside of this one, we will bet uh, the uh, event handler will be called. So let's do that. Let's do a uh, all once again this one, but instead of all, we would do a query selector, and we will query the text box 09 and not the inputs, and on on the element we would add an event listener and we will listen for blur. Blur is the event that happens when something is left and focus when we we we, we visit it or or get the element gets focus. So blur is the opposite to getting focus. Event and an arrow function like that. Uh, so this console.log Uh, now I will just log the uh, um, the element. However, if we do like this, we add value to those. We will instead only get the value and not the nodes uh, themselves. Okay. So if I visit that one, nothing happens. But as soon as I leave, it should have logged something. But since it's empty, it might not. So I'll try. No. 
Oh, wait. Uh, I'm missing something. Well. Maybe I couldn't use the delegate like that. Let's see. It will not trigger. Okay, so after doing some reading, uh, <laughs> this is how, how it works. We are actually not supposed, to, or I'm not talking about, uh, well, maybe I am talking about the, the capture and the bubble phase of, of things uh, when it comes to events. Uh, I thought it was the later part of the course, but it's probably not. But here's the thing, the blur, uh, the blur, uh, um, um, event will not bubble it will only be a, we will only be able to capture it on the capture phase since we are on top of the element that that triggers the event the the, the to do list so the to do list will trigger the event and we can catch the event on the capture phase but it will not bubble so basically we need to add true if we will be able to to catch this event Okay, so adding true for capture, we will see that everything should work just as expected. So if I leave that one and they are empty, they will just add empty rows. But if I write something, I hope they will not be empty, but they are. Okay, username should should get. Oh well, we can't get the. That is the value when it was first selected. We need to do that inside of of the blur. So user uh, name dot value of course, and confirm dot value. Hmm. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we get the value. Uh, what were we supposed to do? We were supposed to check if they were both not empty, right? So if username dot value uh, isn't empty and confirm dot value isn't empty, then we could proceed. Uh, or maybe, yeah, length greater than zero. I think that's even better. Not sure if it will make a difference in this case. Might. Oh, well, I was logging that one, that's why. Uh, okay, so now we got the uh, the test for if they are empty, we could just do a check console.log. Bing. Going here, leave, they are empty. I write something in one, it's still empty. I write something in that one, and now uh, it will be triggered. So we are correct. We were supposed to uh, to see if they were the same. So let's do another if. If username dot value equals uh, confirm dot value, then we know they are the same. If it's not, they are not the same. Uh, and we were supposed to write a message somewhere where we were supposed to leave blah 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 blah. Write an general username, the event should trigger when the user if both have text. 
Okay, so it didn't say actually. So let's see if we could. We have our text boxes. We have a P called validation. This one is probably a good place to play some, some text. Uh, let's find that one. Uh, validation equals document.query selector. Uh, and validation that and validation dot inner text equals the username is okay and the username not match something like that uh, so if they are the same it will say the username is okay, otherwise it will say the usernames don't match. And we will probably need uh, one thing more, but let's see first. So I'm writing Johan and I'm writing Leitet and I'm leaving and it says uh, cannot set properly blah blah blah. Oh, I didn't get that one right. Uh, class validation, class validation. Okay, step 09 and class validation. Uh, step 09, class validation. Should give us the right one. Yeah, the usernames does not match. And if I write the same, it's okay. However, if I empty those, this one will still be there. So maybe we will have to add something on, on this one that says else uh, validation.inner text is empty like that. And now if I write doesn't match. They are okay, and if I delete, the text will disappear. And that is the whole exercise. Uh, of course, you can solve each and every one of the exercises in different ways. I've, I've tried to show you some of the ways of doing that. Uh, feel free to experiment yourself, add your own exercises. Just, just play around. Uh, that's, that's a good way of learning. Uh, and I will see you in the next exercise.